In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, faithful in Christ, this week's subject is not something most of us choose to discuss, but nevertheless, some 50% of us get caught up in it one way or another. The subject I'm referring to is the reality of divorce, and more specifically, divorce in the eyes of our church. In the 21st century, there appears to be a clear correlation between the dwindling number of, of people practicing Christianity and the present frightening rate of divorce. Before we get into the scriptures, to seek answers to the question of our church and divorce, let me digress for a moment and speak for what we are witnessing in society today. There probably aren't too many good reasons for separation outside of mental, physical, sexual abuse. Of course, this is an oversimplification but generally speaking, we can probably all agree that these conditions would justify, would justify cease and desist orders and or divorce proceedings. But most divorces are not for the behaviors we just enumerated. The most common reasons people invoke for their decisions to seek a divorce include General complaints such as, we don't love each other anymore. He doesn't want to have children. We never should have married. Interestingly, these are all opinions and choices regarding the qualities of one's life. The real problems truly stem from ego involvement. Let's face it. Perfect marriages are not that prevalent. What is prevalent is that 50 to 60 percent of couples are not working out their marital problems. More often or not, unhappy couples get caught up in blaming each other for their problems. They become unhappy because of how they manage their thoughts about their circumstances. They never learn that their life is basically a reflection of their own interpretation. The successful ones have learned that reasons such as he makes me unhappy, he doesn't show the affection I need, etc. aren't valid reasons for ending a marriage. Now let us turn to the scriptures. The scriptures of today, Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 to 9, are about divorce, a controversial subject that has disturbed the human society even from the times of our Lord. When our Lord was asked whether it was lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason, our Lord's answer was yet another concurrence with God's commandment that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Matrimony is one of the seven sacraments of our church. During which God mysteriously joins the couple together and henceforth they are no longer to be seen as two, 
but but one flesh. When a man and a woman are joined together in holy matrimony, they vow in front of God, in the presence of the church, that they will live and care for each other, whether in sickness or in good health. The priest prays on their behalf that God may bless their matrimony, sanctify their bread, and make them worthy to procreate. The question is whether or not we can end this hurtful escalation of families being torn asunder. We don't have definitive answers, but we do know one thing that for sure, one thing for sure, and that is there is a direct correlation between the diminishing numbers of practicing Christians and the escalating divorce rate in our country. The 21st century brought with it numerous demographic changes. With the changes of socioeconomic status of the modern family, the couples are no longer depending on each other financially. Regardless of the dependency issues, the couple have to be supportive to each other and have their equal share of contributing in the well-being of the family. In the eyes of the church, if the husband is the head, then the wife is the heart. The head may not function without the heart and vice versa. Both husband and wife must work in full cooperation, coordination, and understanding so that the body both may function in a healthy and a fertile environment. In our midst, we notice many different styles of family living, and generally speaking, most work just fine. It is when one or the other of a marriage partnership becomes convinced that the relationship is broken and can't be repaired that they begin to gravitate to divorce hope. The truth is that some traditional type families perhaps still practice the main dominance which sometimes leads to domestic violence. The Armenian Church and all churches have never accepted such a norm as Eve was created equal to Adam, and both are creations of God. I have heard saying, I have heard the saying time and again that I do not love him or her anymore, or I am not attracted to him or her anymore. Yes, physical attraction is one of the keys that draws partners together. But what lasts in a marriage is that spiritual bond that connects the couples with selfless, selfless dedication, love, patience, respect, and understanding. Truthfulness and openness are the keys to a healthy relationship. Knowing the other partner as you would know yourself is yet another secret to a blissful family life. Because if you would know your life partner that well, you would not do the thing that you know it will hurt his or her feelings. Before taking that first step, our divorce court first Know yourself and you and know your other half, your partner. Substantial part of marriage conflict is due to misunderstandings, misinterpretations, half knowledge about your partner, lack of moral support and trust towards each other. The nurturing and developing of a human relationship does not end with the ceremony of holy matrimony. 
It is really just the beginning of a shared journey where both need to rely on each other, help each other, support each other, and make decisions together. It won't always be easy, for life is a book yet to be written by the newly wedded couple. Use your Bible as a basic source to always return, to always return to at times of conflicts, tribulations, and blessings. Family life can bring immense joy or sometimes intense emotional suffering. If the foundation of the family is built on true love, unconditional devotion, and dedication to each other, it will stand all the difficulties that life inevitably brings. Both husband and wife are the pillars of the family. If one weakens that foundation, it becomes unsteady and unsafe for the well-being of the other family members. Love and respect your partners to the extent of losing your ego in him or her, and thus you will cherish a deeper understanding of what love, sacrifice, and dedication are all about. To this the Apostle attests, as he says, the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over, over his own body, but yields it to his wife. I conclude with the Apostle's meaningful words, where he says, Be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. May glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.